Good evening, everyone. I'm Scott, and uh, I'm on the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Working Group for Mennonite Church Eastern Canada. And I'm, I'm really happy that you're joining us and that we're all uh, part of this call. I'm really looking forward to what Marianne has to say. Um, I've already asked, uh, I've already invited people, if you want to put your name, where you're from in the chat, and whose territory you're living on, please feel free to do so. Uh, my job now is to set the stage uh, as efficiently as possible and then get off so that we can hear from Marianne. Um, a couple of things I want to do before we get started is just to let everyone know that we'll be, and we already are, recording this session. So if you don't want to be in the recording, there's a few things you can do. You can turn off your video. So in the bottom left corner of your screen, you'll see a mute button. You'll all be muted um, throughout the, the, the talk while Marianne's talking. And you can also hit stop video and then you will be, no one will be able to see you. And usually in the bottom corner of your screen, it'll say your name and you can rename yourself if you like, um, if you don't want anyone to see your name uh, on, the, on the screen. So. Um, yeah, there's a couple of things I want to go through. The most important one that I'm going to start with is a land acknowledgement. So I want to acknowledge the land that uh, gives all of us life and without, without which we wouldn't be here. Um, so for me, that land is the Grand River watershed. I think I've already mentioned that. And I just want to invite us, all of us, to focus today and every day on the responsibility we have to care for the land that we belong to and that gives us life. Um, nobody knows that responsibility better than the caretakers, uh, the original caretakers of the land who take that responsibility as seriously now as they, as they always have. Where I am on the Grand River watershed, that is the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee and Chinotan peoples, also known as the neutral peoples. And we are really fortunate tonight to have an Anishinaabe caretaker and teacher here with us. And I'm really looking forward to what she has to say. As a settler on the Grand River watershed and the Haldeman Tract, I feel like I have a responsibility to learn uh, about how to care for the watershed and about the treaties that have been made, broken and need to be repaired here on this land and um, on, on your land too. I, I encourage you to learn about those. And we called this series Treaty as Sacred Covenant because all of us need to learn and understand more about treaties and our spiritual, moral, <laughs> political, and practical duty to honor them. So tonight, this is the eighth and final event in our series. And throughout this whole series, we've created, we've, we've sought to create as a, as a uh, the, that Mennonite Church Eastern Canada Truth and Reconciliation Working Group, which is probably the longest name you'll ever find. Uh, our goal in creating this series has been to create a space for learning and relationship building. And it's gone better than we ever could have imagined, actually. We've had so many people tune in, so much great dialogue, and of course, so much wisdom and so much uh, just such uh, interesting information has been shared with us. Um, I've had people from all over the continent and beyond. Uh, there's been uh, excellent dialogue and respect, and we expect to carry on that tradition tonight. And I'll just have one quick note here that uh, one thing we don't want this forum to be is a place for hate. And so if we see hate, if we hear hate, see hate on the video, see it in the chat, we will remove you. So um, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. Just letting you know in advance. Um, <laughs> Marianne Caviosi is the last speaker in our series, but this is only the beginning of a collective learning journey and the work that we need to do. And we'll actually, I wanna draw your attention to the fact that we've planned another Zoom call like this. Uh, there won't be a speaker, but it's gonna be on May 19th and we can make sure that you get the, everyone who has registered for this is going to get the link for that. Um, you're all welcome to join. And the point of that night is to reflect on what we've learned throughout this series and um, more importantly, to uh, think together about how we're going to take action on the learning to renew and repair the broken treaties. So I really encourage you to join us for that. Um, 
just a couple more things before I hand it over to Mim to open in prayer, and then it'll be time for, for uh, to listen to Marianne. I want to say a special thank you to uh, Mennonite Church Eastern Canada, MCEC. So if you hear us saying MCEC, that's Mennonite Church Eastern Canada. They are our Zoom hosts. We couldn't do this without them. And I want to give a special shout out to Ellen Kim and Joan Schooley. They are our uh, tech hosts tonight, and if you have any tech problems, you can uh, connect with them. And they showed that um, that card to uh, the title card to us before that has their information on it. We'll be sure to put their information in the chat um, so that you can, if you have tech issues, you can get in touch with them and they'll, they'll get you reconnected. Um, next, I also want to uh, highlight our chat moderators. And I don't know if they can be spotlighted now. Um, Leah Bauman. And Katie Gertz and Sheard are uh, our chat moderators tonight. And there they are. <laughs> um, so these good folks are, uh, what, uh, tonight, if you think of questions while you hear Marianne speaking, you can post those in the chat. And um, Katie and Leah are going to collect those and then pose them to Marianne. It'll be a bit of a conversation. Uh, and that Q&A opens around 8 PM. And I'm really excited to have a, to have uh, Katie and Leah joining us. Do you want to say uh, anything? Yeah, just feel free to put questions in the chat that come to you throughout Marianne's um, teachings, and we'll be sure to collect some for the evening. Thanks very much. Um, I just want to give uh, one opening space here before we jump into uh, before I introduce Mim Harder. Um, the, the organizing team, uh, have I missed anything important before we get into our opening? Any important uh, housekeeping? All right, if there's anything else, we'll figure it out along the way. So now I'm gonna uh, pass it over to Mim Harder. She's been doing our opening and closing prayers for this uh, series every single time. And uh, she's also another important role that she fills tonight is um, Marianne is going to be sharing, and all of our speakers have shared about serious issues, um, you know, complicated issues that sometimes, uh, you know, they, they might have an impact on people, you know, an emotional impact, or, you know, you might just want to talk to somebody about the things you've heard tonight. So Mim is a person that you can call, and her number was on the screen. It'll be in the chat as well. I don't know if we've posted it in the chat. I'll, I can read out her number if it's there. Uh, I just want to make sure that even folks who, oh, I think it just got in there. Nope. Um, does anybody have it handy that they could just say it out loud so people can mark it down if they need to? Here yeah. we go. Yeah, it I is. Remember, Sorry. Remember, go ahead. It's 519-745-1111. <laughs> Extension is 362, and it is also in the chat. Thank you, Leah, and thank you for persevering as I kept talking while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pass it over to Mim to um, open our uh, evening. Thank you. Hey, Scott. Um, I don't know about you, but I've had a really busy day. Uh, much of it on Zoom calls. So I'm going to ask you to do something different tonight. I am going to light the smudge as I have for all the other meetings if my match will work. While I'm doing this, I would like you to close your eyes or bow your head or look out the window, whatever you need to do to just kind of quiet yourself a little bit. I want you to listen and to feel the beating of your heart. If you're sitting with someone, or even if you're not, take your hand or the hand next to you in your own. And I want you to feel the temperature of your skin, warm or cold, clammy. And I want you to feel that life that exists that beneath, that lives beneath that skin. If you can feel the pulse that's also beating in your hand, because you do have a heartbeat down there as well. Listen to what is in your own heart and in your mind. 
Listen to your thoughts and your inner voices. I want you to take those things that are cluttering your mind and give them to creator. If you need to use your hands and physically release them, that's okay. Whatever it takes for you to let those things go for the next hour, hour and a half. I want to thank creator for the path that we have all been given to walk today to say thank you for the hardships because those are what help you grow. I wanna say thank you for the mistakes that you think you might've made because creator may have a plan for those that you don't see yet. Those mistakes may be part of that plan even if they don't look like it right now. I want you to say thank you for the joys and the beauty around you. The things that you've taken for granted today like clean water good healthy food, the house or shelter that you have that cover you from the snow. These are all the perks that you've had today, the joys that we need to be grateful for. I want you to open your heart to the wonder of all creation, what's outside those four walls that you're sitting in, for creator's love and for the peace that will be given when you lay down to rest tonight. Open yourself to who you are and who you will become. Creator will be there to guide you. I ask you tonight to open your ears and your heart to hear the words that will be spoken. The words will be spoken from Marianne's truth. The words that she is meant to speak. The words that you are meant to hear by being present tonight. Visualize the water that Marianne is going to be talking about. And if you have water with you, sip it as you hear the word spoken, as a reminder that water is life. We are born in water. We need water to live. Let your heart feel and let your heart help your ears to hear, your ears to hear as well. May this quieting of our consciousness stay with us as we walk together over the next hour. All my relations. Thank you so much, Lynn. Now uh, I have the pleasure to introduce Marianne Kabiosi. Um, she is an Ojibwe Anishinaabe Kwe Bear Clan from the Great Lakes region where her ancestors walk. She's an artist, counselor, and PhD student in Indigenous Studies at Trent University. She's also a water walker who holds and shares tradition, traditional teachings from her elders and teachers. She has responsibility for the gift of workshops she received from her elders on stages of life, medicine wheel teachings, self-care, seven stages of life, and Indigenous, non-Indigenous worldview. She also holds a Master of Social Work at Wilfrid Laurier University, a Bachelor of First Nations and Aboriginal Counseling degree at Brandon University. And this coming September, she will lead the fourth of four ceremonial water walks on the Grand River following the protocols of Josephine Ba Mondamin. And I'm sure she will be sharing experiences and lessons from those water walks with us tonight. So please share with us, Marianne. Bonjour. Bonjour, Kanawea. Hello, everyone. Nodani Kwe Indishnikaz, Makwadodem. We quem kong manadong and a sing don't you ba? O jibwe on a schnabe quay, meanwhile, you jum a day when in dow. You can a magazine in dow. Kichimi guach kijemnero for this time. So, hello everyone. Uh, my English name is Marianne Caviosi, and I just reintroduced myself in Anishinaabe Moen, my traditional language, which I lost uh, over time through colonization, but which I am now. Reclaiming. I am Bear Clan from uh, Wikwamakong, unceded territory, and my parents come from Sagamak First Nations. And I've, since that time, um, 
uh, was part of the residential school system and the 60 scoop. And uh, since that time, I've begun to walk my Anishinaabe path. And uh, since then, I have learned much. I always say I don't know a lot, <laughs> but uh, what I do know is what I've lived. And uh, what I wanted to share with you tonight, and, uh, and I wanted to, uh, before I start, I just wanted to say um, miigwech for this invitation to speak. I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to have this time to, to share what I do know. Uh, and um, it's always a gift to be able to, to share, to share memories, to share stories, to uh, share teachings. And, and part of that is, um, uh, as a, some of the words I wanna talk about are respect, um, reciprocity, uh, relationship. But along with that comes a responsibility. And part of that responsibility, when I identified myself with my name, my clan, and, and where I'm from and who I am, is that with being Anishinaabeg, um, there's a lot of responsibility in recalling and following the teachings that we've been given. And as an Anishinaabe Kwe, as a woman, I have other responsibilities. A part of those responsibilities are the water. And then that other responsibility that comes in my introduction is my clan. And uh, I'm Bear Clan. And as a Bear Clan person, I have responsibilities um, around that clan. And for us, it's the medicines. And that means helping people. And when I think of the bear helping people, there comes that, um, the counseling work that I do, the helping work that I do, the ceremonies that I do to help other people. Uh, and in that, in that role as a sweat lodge uh, carrier, I'm helping people. And in, as I'm growing and learning in my role in the Medewan Lodge, I'm learning about medicines. And that's, that's an ongoing process. That's, that doesn't happen immediately. And uh, through time, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly learning one plant at a time and, and one tree at a time. And so it's, um, it's with humility that I share what I know. And uh, so, as Scott mentioned, I, I have the wonderful gift of having been given the, the water walk teachings. And uh, at that time, when I received that uh, gift, I, I wanted to just mention that um, what I know comes from my elders, what I know comes from my teachers, and what I know comes from creation. And uh, one of those, um, you know, this acknowledgement about the land, but we also have a responsibility to acknowledge those who have passed on that knowledge to us or who have passed on the work. And so when I started walking the, for the water, with the water, it was with uh, Josephine uh, Mandam and Ba. Uh, she's, uh, I say Ba, it's the late Josephine Mandaman, who was the first water walker. And uh, Josephine uh, was committed to walking for the water. She started doing uh, the Great Lakes water walks in 2003. And uh, <clears throat> one of my sisters, who's now passed, Violet, uh, she also walked alongside Josephine. And uh, so I'm quite familiar with the water walks. However, it took me a long time to actually get started. And it's with, it was with the, the calling from uh, another of my sisters, Loretta. <clears throat> She's my eldest sister. And uh, she, she walked uh, with Josephine for the last of Josephine's water walks. That was in 2017. And so my sister Loretta called me up to, uh, to do that walk with her. And, it was beautiful. It was the most amazing experience I think I've ever had. Well, there are others, but this, this was transformative. And so um, 
And so I did that walk and I went back to, um, so that walk involved uh, starting from Duluth, Minnesota and uh, across uh, and around the Great Lakes and all the way up the St. Lawrence uh, to Matan, Quebec. It was a, it was a long walk. Uh, it started in April and ended in June, the end of June. And I, I kind of started about halfway uh, around Leamington. And we walked sometimes 50 kilometers a day, sometimes 60. And it was beautiful. It was, it was not tiring. It was, it was um, uplifting. It was invigorating. It was tiring. And, and there was, I think, each person who walked uh, or who has walked for the water understands that something changes inside you. Something spiritual changes. And, and so I wanted to, um, you know, tell how that started for me. And, and so when I finished Josephine's last walk, I was just finishing my MSW in um, Kitchener at Wilfrid Laurier University. And uh, that, was an, that was an amazing journey in itself. And when I finished there, I talked to one of the local elders, uh, Jean Becker, you know, and she was, uh, I, I said, you know, I want to have a conversation, like, what should I do next? And should I stay here? Should I, should I move or anyway, so I got together with her and uh, she says, well, what, what did you do last year? I says, well, I, wa I walked for the water with Josephine. And she said, maybe you should walk for the Grand River. And so that thought, uh, that thought stayed with me. In fact, it actually just, it just hit. And I don't know, there's some things in life that go that way. Someone says something and you go, yes, that's what I have to do. It's like your spirit tells you something. And, and so that idea just kept going over and over in my mind. And, and so I pursued it. I, I thought about it. I kept thinking about it. And I went to another gathering in, um, in Kitchener. Um, there was a, a woman's gathering and there was a woman there who was uh, in attendance. She's actually on this call right now and I won't say her name, but she was, uh, she's part of the Mennonite community. And her, she, sa she said her ears just perked up because uh, we were talking about what we were going to be doing and what we do with what we do in our life. And, and I said, I'm going to walk for the Grand River. That's what I want to do. And uh, so she, uh, she connected with me. And then the next thing you know, we started planning. And I think in my, in, in, in what I, what I know is um, once you start having a, a vision, not the type of vision like we have in dreams or in ceremonies. However, those are just as instructional. But when you see something that you want to do, that's the vision I'm thinking about. And, and, and so that's what I was led by, the vision. I could see myself and others walking for the waters of the Grand River. And so this, this eagle, eagle feather that I'm carrying it's part of that walk. And this eagle represents vision. It's, it's the sacred, it's a sacred being who sees the furthest. And it said in our teachings that the eagle saved us, that this, this eagle saved the Anishinaabe people and other people. Uh, when we were we were in a bad place in those times, and we had forgotten our teachings and we'd forgotten our ceremonies, and we weren't doing those responsibilities that I talked about earlier. Because as Anishinaabe, our responsibilities are to do those ceremonies, and we had stopped. Something had happened. We had fallen by the 
fallen fallen down and part of that was colonization however the eagle upon hearing creator say that he was going to cause a great um, event to happen that would destroy us the eagle uh, felt pity for us and he soared he asked creator no don't don't destroy them don't destroy them i will look i will find someone i will find someone who's practicing their ceremonies and so that eagle came down and he came down and he flew all over he flew all across the land over the over the lakes over the prairies over the mountains until he finally looked down one day he was getting tired because he couldn't find anyone and then this one time he looked and there was a grandmother and a grandfather and a little grandson were standing around a little fire and they were doing a little pipe ceremony and that and that eagle was so excited he he circled he circled and and he called out in that eagle call the eagle whistle that we sometimes hear if we're lucky to hear that whistle and that eagle flew over and over and he was so excited and then the grandfather and the grandmother looked up and they saw they saw that eagle circling and they lifted up and they acknowledged acknowledged the eagle who flew up who flew up and soared and soared and soared up to creator and told him told creator him her that what he had seen that he had seen someone still practicing their ceremonies and so that destruction that had been planned was canceled and so it is said whenever we have ceremonies and we know this to be true is that we often see the eagle soaring overhead at our powwows at our uh, daywin lodges at our sweat lodges any of our ceremonies we always look up and we acknowledge and we respect so when i talked about respect earlier that's all part of it that's part of the teaching and we think sometimes so that respect is something that has to be earned. That's a, that's a narrative that we hear. You have to earn my respect. When in reality, our teachings, our Anishinaabeg teachings say that we're born, we are born respecting creation. And so when we do the water walk, you know, I think about that, or I think about our creation story, and I don't, I have not been gifted um, with the uh, the rights to tell the full creation story. I only have the right to share uh, what are my teachings that I've been gifted with, like the sweat lodge. But the 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 really powerful part about creation story, which is really important, when we think about the earth and the waters and the air and all of creation is that man was put here last and everything else was put here first. The sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the Milky Way system, everything was put here first. They were there and each one of those what we call relatives, they all had uh, instructions. And so what I mentioned earlier about responsibilities, the other word is instructions. They had those instructions to follow. The moon had the responsibility for the tides and the waters. The sun had the responsibilities for brightness and warmth for the earth. And they were related, the moon and 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 the sun, they shared responsibilities. They had a reciprocal relationship as did the stars and the planets. And so they were created and then the rest of creation was put here. The plants, the trees, the waters, 
that was laid down next, and then all of the other beings, the winged ones, the swimmers, the crawlers, everything that was in the water was put here first, the turtles, the fish, the otters, all of the winged ones that stand around the water, the heron, the egrets, all of the winged ones, they're all, they were here. And then the four-legged, the bear, the wolf, the moose, you know, um, all of them, they were then here. And the wolf had a special role in our creation story. He was man's best friend. And so that being said, all of that was laid down first and then creator put man down. We say Anishinaabe as first man. And so it, it is said that man, when he was uh, put down, was given uh, sacred breath from creator and all of the knowledge and all of his instructions, uh, he breathed into us. And then when man stepped down, he was landed on his tiptoes. He was just pointed his tip, tip toes because he didn't want to hurt any of the blades of grass. She didn't want to hurt any of the plant life. It was so beautiful. Everything was perfect. Everything was there. And so immediately creator put in that teaching about respect, reciprocity and relationships. And so when man touched down, his responsibility was to care for the earth, to take care of everything that was here, not to have dominion over the earth, but to be in relationship with the earth and all that was here. And so we hear that phrase, all my relations. It's not, it's not just a phrase, it is meaningful. It means everything out there is our relative. Every plant, every tree, every flower, everything has a spirit. And sometimes, you know, we as, as Anishinaabe people or indigenous people from various countries all over the world, we recognize that relationship that we, we count on, we honor everything in creation because it, we, we rely on that. Water, we rely on water. If water wasn't here, we wouldn't be here. If the plants weren't here, we wouldn't be here. If the animals weren't here, we would not have food. So there's that relationship. And so we always respected uh, those beings. And how did we respect them? We honored them. We were often have been told through time that we were pagans, that we worshiped. We worshiped these things, these beings, they're not things, but we actually are honoring them. When we have our uh, full moon ceremony, we're honoring the water, we're honoring the moon, we're honoring the work that the moon does for the women and for the waters. When we have solstice ceremonies, we're honoring that time. We put all of our medicines out. And so, and so there's times of the year when other nations like Haudenosaunee, they honor the corn, they honor the, all of those parts of their teachings, they honor. And, and so each nation has that responsibility to honor. And so when we did that water walk, um, to go back to that story, <clears throat> every morning, um, every morning we started out this way. So first I'll, I'll talk about Josephine Ba a little bit. When we did her water walk, we started at uh, two in the morning or three in the morning. We started at three o'clock in the morning. We were on the road at three o'clock. 
we all met and we smudged just like we, um, I did and Mimi offered. We smudged so we could cleanse ourselves, cleanse our mind, take away an, uh, any negativity. And then, we'd, and then we'd cleanse our ears so that we heard all good things, cleanse our mouth so that we sp speak good words and our hearts so that our, our emotions were loving and kind. And so that's how we started every morning. And, and just, just to say that the water walk is not just a walk, it's a ceremony. It's an Anishinaabe ceremony. And so all of those parts of that walk are enveloped in ceremonial practice. And so every morning when we started walking, after we smudged, after we put down tobacco, uh, tobacco always goes first. You know, when we talk about respect, um, when you're looking for teachings, when you're looking for questions from an elder or a knowledge keeper, you always present with tobacco. Anytime you take anything off the land, even if it's a small stone, a medicine, we always put tobacco down. That's how we respect that spirit of that tobacco, of that medicine, of that stone, because we see the stone as our relative. And so we're honoring it. We put down tobacco. We thank it for what it's going to do for us. Why are we picking it up? And so uh, every, every, every morning, um, we would be walking. So I gave people a break. I said, we're going to start at four, not three. <laughs> so we're out on the road. We're on the road at uh, four o'clock. And for those who've never been up at that time, it's an incredible time of the morning. And what that, what that time does is it reminds you, it connects you to Mother Earth. Because all, all that you hear at three o'clock in the morning is your footsteps, nothing else. For about an hour, that's all you hear. And then when you look up, you can, you'll see millions of stars. We don't often have that opportunity. Most people get up at five o'clock, six o'clock and everything is bright. But at four in the morning or three in the morning, that's what we see, millions of stars. And then as time goes on, we start hearing all of the wee animals or the winged ones. We start hearing the crickets. We start hearing the frogs. We start hearing the toads. We start hearing all of those small creatures. And we would never hear that in our homes or we rarely hear that as we're waking up at six in the morning. We don't hear those sounds. We start hearing them at nighttime, but in the morning time. And it was like, a, it was a pattern. It was a pattern of, of, of beautiful sounds from our relatives. The crickets, the bees, the little insects, the frogs. And then we started hearing the birds. And the first bird that we hear, the first winged, is Opichi. Opichi is the robin. The robin is the one that sings first. And then, and then the other birds start joining in in different in their order. And there's a, so there's the blue jay, and then there's the red winged blackbird, and then there's the crow, and then there's all of the other ones. Morning dove is actually after the after the robin. But there's that same pattern, and we heard it every morning. It was beautiful. It was like a, a symphony. And it just, it's like a symphony like no other. And so you have that, that sound of silence and then you have everything waking up and you see the millions of stars. And then as you keep walking and you keep walking, then we see the sky changing colors. We start to see the, the black sky just a tinge of color on the horizon. We start seeing the pink, the peach, 
and then the soft, the softest blue, and then that beautiful, they call that spirit piercing blue. It's like a lavender navy color. It's unbelievable. And so we see the sky realm opening. And so that's what we're hearing. That's what we're seeing. And when you see that and hear that, that's what your spirit feels. And then your heart just feels alive. You feel alive. And in that time, the women are carrying the pail of water. It's a copper pail. You know, I have, I have a copper cup here. Uh, but during the water walk, uh, we have a copper pail. And I was gifted uh, Josephine Ba's um, copper pail from her walks, which was an honor. And then the men who walk beside us, they carry the, an eagle staff. And as I mentioned earlier, that staff represents vision. And the man walking beside us or just behind us, his role as a protector is to make sure that we're safe, to make sure that the woman who's carrying the pail filled with, filled with water is safe. And, and so I mentioned that Josephine had started these water walks. Uh, it was to raise awareness about the sacredness of water, that water is life and that without water, we wouldn't be here. And so what, what the women do and what everyone does who joins us on the water walk is that we sing, we sing to the water. We pray for the water. We think about the water and then we're carrying the water. And so why we're smudging before we start is so that we're all positive. We have good feelings, good energy, good heart. Everything is positive for carrying the water. And so I have to go back to the very beginning again. When we pick up the pail, um, when we first fill the pail, so the first year in 2018, uh, we started up at the source of the Grand River, which is uh, near Dundalk, and uh, not far from Elmira. And uh, so we start at the source, we pick up the water, and then as soon as we pick up the water, we just keep walking. We don't stop. And the woman who's carrying the water is looking straight ahead as she's singing and praying and talking to the water, straight ahead. So that idea of looking straight ahead is that the, the belief and the yearning and the wish is that nibby or water will always be flowing, will always be flowing, will not stop flowing. And so we just keep walking, walking and walking. The man walks beside us with the eagle staff, making sure, looking behind to make sure traffic isn't there. And if it is, he walks up to protect the woman carrying the pail. So it's all purposeful. And the man too is praying and singing. It's all ceremony. And, and so, that goes on until we touch down. We call it touchdown when we finish at the end of that, that day, that day's walk. And for us, for the Grand River, we, we might have walked 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers. It depended on what traffic was like, what the weather was like. And that's how it was with Josephine. If the water, if it rained and rained all day, we would have a short walk. Um, but that didn't stop us during the Grand River Water Walk last year. We walked right through the downpours. We walked through walls of water. And, and so that's the whole idea is that we don't let things stop us from doing the, the work, from carrying on that responsibility, those instructions. And so that's how the walk would unfold. And, and sometimes what we found is that 
particularly around um, communities like uh, Brantford uh, or Kitchener or the outskirts of Kitchener. There were some particularly tricky places, like very stressful. And uh, I think one of the I, one of the reasons why, in addition to connecting with creation early in the morning, is that we would avoid we would avoid the stresses that we would almost always invariably feel from traffic, uh, rush hour. And so sometimes what happened during those stressful times is that um, people would yell at us or we they would be honking their horns or they'd be frustrated because we were impeding their progress to work. <laughs> um, those things happened. And, and also what happened is that we would go through territories and where there was a lot of windmills or there was a lot of pollution, a lot of noise. And we know, we know that that impacted the water. And, and so we know how that makes us feel as human beings when we're yelled at, when someone's honking their horn, when they're driving through rush hour. We know how that, how that feels, that anxiety we feel. And so how does, that, how does the water feel? Because we are made of water. We have water in our bodies as human beings. And so that teaching, there were a lot of teachings that, that you know, I could share about that, about water just in itself. But then at the end of each day, we would gather in a circle. All of the core walkers would sit together in a circle and we would share what we felt, what happened, anything that happened during that walk, during that time. And I remember that one time that it was so stressful. And um, we were very blessed to have our allied uh, helpers uh, praying for us in the background, you know, uh, sending us Reiki and, uh, and other, other good energy from a distance because we really needed it during those times. But I remember thinking, if that's how we feel as human beings, we're, we're, we're a good size. Some of us are small, some of us are bigger. But how our bodies felt at the end of those days. Each car had smudge in it, thankfully, because we needed it. We needed to calm down during those moments when we were um, mistreated on our journey. And, and I would think, if that's how we feel, what do the squirrels feel like? What do the little ones feel like? What do the birds feel like in those urban settings when they hear those sounds, those unnatural sounds? And that was a real teaching for me because I know how I felt. I was pretty stressed out. A lot of the walkers were very stressed out. We were feeling it. We were crying and we were shaking. Uh, there was moments uh, when an accident happened and the, and the man turned around and yelled at me saying it was my fault. <laughs> you know, I remember that I was just shaking and I couldn't stop. I just kept walking. I had to keep walking with that pail. And, and so those, um, those lessons still sit with me because right here in Peterborough where I'm sitting, you know, and I, I, I forgot even myself to acknowledge that I'm on Michisagi Nishnabe territory and I'm a visitor here. And, and even as a visitor, you know, I hear, I hear the sounds outside my balcony. I hear the sirens, I hear the traffic. I, and it get, gets louder and noisier as summer arrives. And I know how that feels. And so I think about creation. I think about the creation story where we were taught or told about our responsibilities to take care of creation, to take care 
of those beings. And sometimes it hurts. I, I know that yeah, last week or even two weeks ago, I started thinking about tonight. I started thinking about, or I thought about Water Day because I spoke on Water Day and Earth Day. And as I was walking on my morning walk down to the water to offer song, to offer a prayer, to offer my tobacco to the water, <clears throat> to honor the water, I was looking at her. And as I looked down, the water looked dirty. It looked murky. And as I looked around on the shoreline, there was garbage. And I felt really, I felt really sad. And that responsibility to do something came over me. And at that time, I didn't have any garbage bags or uh, <clears throat> anything to collect uh, what I saw. <clears throat> but on the way home, on the way back to this place here where I sit, I've just picked up a few things and I, I, I made my way to the garbage bins that I, I found and uh, threw the garbage in there. And the next day I went out and I filled two bags just in the little small space. You know, Tim Horton's mugs, uh, McDonald's cups. And, and then in the tree, I went to greet the tree because that's one of our instructions is to say hello to all of our relatives. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this one morning, I, I went over to the cedar tree. And the cedar is one of our medicines. And I touched the cedar bough. And I said, oh, you're so beautiful. Good morning. Good morning, beautiful. And I approached and I looked and I looked into the boughs and there was garbage. It was so heartbreaking to see that. And I thought, it's no wonder the birds don't come here to this tree. There's no nests. All there is is garbage. And so I took all of that garbage out of the tree. But I just, it hit me that our mother earth is not being tended to. And that one, two days in a row I went out and I picked up garbage. Um, it was a pretty heavy, heavy, well-traveled highway here, roadway. And I walked and I picked up the garbage, bent over and people looked at me. There were people, a couple of young people walked by and they didn't even look, they didn't say anything. They just kept walking, their headphones on. And, and I wondered, this is your, this is your, you're the next generation. And how, how is the earth going to be if you have grandchildren? If you have children, what will this place look like? And so it's devastating, you know, to, to see that. And, and to see the cigarette butts on the sidewalks, on the grass. And uh, so when we talk about responsibility, when we talk about respect, I ask myself, do they even respect their mother? That's how we see the earth as our mother. When we were first placed down in the creation story, our instructions were to take care of the earth and to honor the earth. And so if you think of the earth as your mother, as carrying all of your food, your water, your medicines, the animals who give up their life for you to eat, and you throw garbage and you just toss it out your car window and not even think, or you throw your cigarette butts all over. I guess that's what I um, have been noticing a lot 
and in this neighborhood here, I could go out and I have gone out and picked up. Um, and you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to say this, but sometimes I don't even feel like going for walks because I know what I'm gonna see. And, and that's hard because I love walking. <laughs> I'm prepping for the next water walk. And I plan my walk. I say, I won't come that way because I know it will hurt. But I also know the responsibility to clean up. And so I do. And I'll go back. I tell myself, it's just gonna be dirty anyway tomorrow. And that's what happens. I come back and there's more garbage. So, you know, when I think about when people say, well, what, what, what can I do? How about picking up after yourself? How about treating your mother earth with respect and reciprocity? And reciprocity, reciprocity is what can you give back? And we hear sometimes how there's so much uh, clear cutting and the company say, well, we're gonna replant. Yes, perhaps that's true. Perhaps you will replant, but you have no idea who was next to those trees. Because in, those, in what we know as Anishinaabe people, knowledge of the, of the plant world, it isn't just a tree and you replant a tree. There's other plants that are supporting that tree. There are other relatives that know that tree and they have relationships. And, the, and, when, you're, and when you go there, and when I go for my walks too, I just see whole fields clear cut, mowed down, the lawnmowers are out. And there's so many medicines that are just cut down. I see medicines that I know of as a person who knows those medicines. And I'm always devastated. Dandelions, yarrow, um, plantain, clover. People see them as weeds and they got to cut them. And we got to put herbicides on them. But they're medicine. Our people have always used medicines. Those plants are our helpers and they heal us. So we have to remember that relationship. That's our relationship. And so when we do the water walk and we start, when we walk out at three in the morning, that's what I remember, our relationships, our relationships to the plant beings, to the small ones, to the frogs, to the crickets, to the water life, to the marshes, to the streams. And so every time we walked over a stream, it was usually the man or whoever was carrying the eagle staff. It could be a woman if there's not enough men to carry the eagle staff. It's their responsibility to put tobacco, uh, make an offering to the water. Any streams we go past, it's to honor that, that water. And, and so that's, that's how the walk goes. We start at three in the morning. We finish when we're done. Some people say, well, what time do you finish? Well, it's like any other ceremony. We don't know. <laughs> it's done when it's done. And, uh, and so that's how, that's, that's how we flow. We say we flow with the water. And the first year, I remember we had a, a number of men that joined us from KW. It was really good to see um, our allies walking with us. And that's why I, when I first started visioning it, I started seeing it as an all nations Grand River water walk not just for our people, indigenous peoples. It was for everyone to come. And I had at first, when I first started talking with uh, my Mennonite uh, allied friend um, and other people, when we started gathering and having meetings, it was our allied settlers from the region who were sudden, who were excited. And they all started coming together. And my friend said, it's like the tributaries. Everyone started joining. 
and it was beautiful. And at that time, Josephine was still here. And I mentioned that to her. I said, you know, well, a lot of the helpers that are joining me and wanting to help organize our, our allied um, people from the area. And she said, that's good. She said, everyone uses water. Everyone uses water and needs water. So everyone has to help. Everyone should be part of this. And, and so that's, you know, that's how it, how it worked out. We had uh, last year, because of COVID, we couldn't, we couldn't really open it wide. We couldn't extend our invitation hugely. It would have been nice, but we had to um, kind of limit the participation to the core walkers. We had other, we invited the community to walk behind the core walkers, but we limited the uh, contact with the Eagle staff and the pail to the core walkers. And by core walkers, I mean the people who walk for the whole, who are there for the full seven days or the full two weeks, uh, they're core walkers. And, and we invite people to come, they can come for a day, they can come for the, <clears throat> for the morning, they can come for two days, but um, the core walkers are there for the whole, the whole period of time. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, gathering, ceremony. Um, we're hoping <clears throat> this year, we don't know what will happen with um, the pandemic. We're hoping by September that um, we can open it again to more people because uh, that's how I would like to see it. And Josephine, when she first um, started teaching me with about the water walk, um, I thought it was I thought I was just going to do this for a year, <laughs> like 2018. She was, oh no! Once you start this, you have to you have to do four years, and and so this this year will be year four, but I don't think it will stop uh, because I think the water needs us. The water needs our help. And, uh, and Josephine Bott shared this other beautiful teaching one time too that the water needs us to pray for her and to sing for her, to acknowledge her. And I mentioned earlier that I walked down to this little stream and she was looking murky. And I started talking to her. I says, I'll help you. I, I, I help you. I love you. I honor you. And I respect you. And that, and that goes back to the words um, of the um, Nibi song that was first rendered by a woman up north and her grandson, Doreen Day, who uh, when they first started going to the water in that way, they said to the water, we love you, we respect you, we honor you. And they said, well, let's sing it. Let's, let's say those words in our, in our language. And uh, so those uh, words became the Nibi song, which a lot of us know and which we sing during the water walk and at our water ceremonies. And, and so that's... Um, When I went to the water and talked to it like that, it reminded me of what Josephine said. She says, think about when you're sick. People now are sick with COVID or anything, when you're not feeling well. How does it feel when someone comes to you and you're lying down and they say, hello, are you okay? Are you feeling better? Hello, my darling, or hello, my love. Are you okay? Can I get, can I get you something? Can I sing to you? Can I get you some food? Can I get you some water? She said, that's how the water feels. 
but being acknowledged, tended to, and cared for. That's how the water feels. And so our responsibility is to do that for the water and for the earth, for the trees, for the medicines, for all that is out there, for the stones, and even acknowledging this rain that's falling, that fell as snow. A lot of people were saying, oh, it's snowing again. I said, well, it's, it's Nibi in a different form. And she's still medicine in whatever way she is, whether it's fog, mist, rain, hail, sleet, blizzard, that's still water. And we can curse her in that form. However, the earth is thankful. And the earth is very thankful for her right now. The earth is dry. The earth needs that nourishment. And so do the other beings. And so when we talk about relationship and reciprocity, all of those beings that we saw, that we heard, and definitely saw during our water walks and felt, they all count on each other. It's not just man that counts on them. They, they have a reciprocal relationship with each other and they know that. So when it rains, the grasses are fed, the worms are fed, opichi, the robins are fed, and then the, the robin gathers the worms for the babies in the nests, and then so on and so forth. We all know that cycle of life, but we somehow been, become disconnected from it. You know, the cycle of water even, you know, that we've learned that in science class, the basic cycle. The rain comes down, it goes into the earth, goes back up into the clouds and comes back down. And so when we think about what are we putting in the earth? What poisons are we putting in the earth and in the water? That's gonna go right up into our food. It's gonna go up into the clouds and come back down. It's not just hurting us. It's also hurting the trees, the plant life and whatever is eating those plants, all those beings. So it's about respect and it's about understanding your relationship and reciprocity, giving back, giving back your songs, your prayers, or planting, you know, planting, uh, planting uh, special flowers for the pollinators. That's something we can do. That's something we can teach the young children. Plant things for the berry, for the bees, and the, and the other pollinators. Because without the bees, we wouldn't have coffee. Without those ones, we wouldn't have a lot of things. But we take we take it for granted. We are serving ourselves as humans. We don't think about creation. And that's what we need to do when we think about Earth Day, when we think about Water Day. It's creation. Without creation, we wouldn't be here. And so that's how I, I would like to, I guess, end there. And I offer my uh, prayers for those who are not well, um, for those whose minds are tangled, who are worried, uh, for those who are homeless, for those who are, are poor, for those who have limited food. And I pray for creation. I do that every morning. I stand out and that's our responsibility. Our original instructions as Anishinaabe people the Haudenosaunee also do this with their Thanksgiving prayer. The first thing we do every morning is to offer your tobacco, give thanks to Creator for everything. And you name everything the plants, the winged, the swimmers, the crawlers, the moon, the sun, the stars, the planets, because they're all our relatives and they all offer gifts to each other. 
and to the rest of creation. And so I do that every morning. And um, I end the evening with a miigwech. I just say words of gratitude for the day that I had, for the gifts that I was given, for the feather, for the smudge that I have, for all of these medicines that, that I've been given. And <clears throat> we often talk about our bundles and we have those drums, moccasins, uh, our songs, um, our feathers, feather fans, whatever we carry that helps us, it's all part of creation. We don't go and buy them in the store. It's all part of what we've been given. And so that, that um, reciprocity is, uh, is key. And that's what I wanted to share with, uh, with you tonight. So miigwech for your listening, for your thoughts, for your hearing, for seeing me. And um, I hope uh, what I share uh, brings you something. I hope you can join us on the Grand River Water Walk. This year, um, we decided to start at the source at Dundalk, and we're gonna walk down the west side of the Grand River, and we're gonna walk all the way to the, to the mouth at Lake Erie. We'll feed the water there, and then we'll stop, and then we'll continue on the east side of the Grand River, all the way back up to the source. So we're gonna be doing a circle. And with the Grand River Water Walk, we call it a grassroots um, ceremony, for want of a better word. And so we do fundraising. Uh, we have a website, we have a Facebook site, so people can donate uh, if they can't walk, uh, but if they'd like to walk, uh, there's a place to, to uh, say that. There's an email um, place on our website where you can say, please add me to your email. And so we send out notices as we get closer. We talk about the, uh, the auction that's coming up. We have an online auction. That's our, big, our biggest fundraiser. And uh, in years back, I used to go around and speak to the various faith organizations, to the number of churches, which I really enjoyed. Uh, but we can't do that now because of COVID. Um, and uh, there's a woman, I think she might be doing, um, uh, we had a fundraising spaghetti dinner, I think it was last year, or no, the year before maybe. I can't remember. Time is changing at this, at this point. So it was, a, it was really well attended and we really enjoyed uh, all of those people who came out and, and heard the teachings for the water walk. So there's a lot that can be done if you can't walk. And we welcome your feedback. We welcome any ideas um, of how you can help the water, how you can understand that water is life, how you can incorporate any of those teachings into your own life. You know, uh, some of those who uh, came on the water walk, they said that they were transformed and they had a new appreciation for water. That, you know, we, we can just go and turn our tap and water is there, but we often misuse water. You know, we have our hour long shower or keep the water running when we're brushing our teeth. And, you know, there's small things that we can do. And uh, so I'll close with that. I don't want to go way past my bedtime as I want to do sometimes, but I thank you again. And uh, if you have any questions or um, want to share anything, please do so. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marianne. I, I really appreciate everything that you had to say. I could listen to you speak for a long, long time. I've had the chance to do so many times, and I've heard, I've, I've, I, uh, I want to do so again. Um, you, you spoke about offering a gift, and I just wanted to say thank you for the gift that you've offered to all of us tonight with your words. And um, I can only speak for myself and what's happening in my heart, but I feel like you wrote those words on my heart. So thank you. 
Uh, and those are words that we need to hear so badly uh, this day before Earth Day. So thank you again. And now, um, oh, I want to mention that um, we passed along. I see you've got your copper mug there, which is fantastic. We also sent a mug uh, along to a pottery mug. So uh, I want to say, say a shout out for the, oh, here's the, there's the, the mug, what, uh, a replica of the mug that we would have sent to you. And um, yeah, a shout out to Ron Fleming, who always takes care yes. of it. Yes, I received it. It's beautiful. Excellent. Yes, Great. thank you very much. Yeah, and I see there are some questions in the chat, so I'm gonna hand it over to Katie and Leah now. Yes, um, I wanna echo what Scott said. Thank you so much for all of your um, words that you've shared with us. Um, yeah, we have a few questions. Um, the first is, um, what is the significance of the copper pail in the water? Okay, so um, the copper that we, um, the copper pail that we carry, <clears throat> and we do, we use the copper in a lot of our water ceremonies as well, is that the water that's in the, the copper becomes clean. It just, it becomes clean. That's, that's the purpose of it. It's, that's, it's been scientifically acknowledged that water when held or or, or put in a copper cup um, becomes clean. There's something that happens in that ionization, I guess. And so that's why we, ca we carry the, uh, the pail. It's part of our, uh, our uh, ceremonies as well. Okay, thank you. Um, someone is wondering, can you speak more to the relationship between um, women and water? Yes, uh, so <clears throat> um, that's one of our Anishinaabe teachings is our responsibility for the water. And that stems from the, uh, the reality that women give life, that we create life as women, giving birth to children, giving birth, and that we carry the water, we carry the baby, in our water for nine months. And so that's where we are held for nine months is in our mother's water. And so that's that relationship uh, stems from that teaching and from that um, instruction. And so when we give life, our water flows out. And then uh, for the full moon, so we call we call the moon Nokomis, which is grandmother. And when we have our full moon ceremonies, we put our, we bring out our water and we lift the water, we sing to the water and we lift the water up to the moon. We say our prayers to Nokomis, which is our grandmother. And she takes care of the earth and the waters and the tides. And so that's that other relationship with the waters. And so that's how we were given those, those uh, um, responsibilities. <clears throat> and so there's another part of creation story, <clears throat> which I said, I don't have the right to give some of those teachings, but that's where part of those teachings come from is when creator made the moon, uh, there, was, there were tears that were shed and those tears are the waters that fell to the earth and so when we think of the water falling, that's like the tears of Mother Earth falling. And it's Mother, Mother Earth. And uh, the teaching is that the water, the streams, the rivers, it's the blood of Mother Earth. That's our Mother Earth's bloods, our, her veins. <clears throat> does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. Um, could you speak more to the relationship between Indigenous settler reconciliation and reconciliation with the earth? Um, I think what I was, a little bit of what I was saying about um, 
about the um, picking up the garbage, about doing things to help the earth so that reciprocity in, in giving back as opposed to just taking. Because as, as of now, what we've seen is mining, oil companies, it's extracting, it's taking all of the spirit from the earth. And so if you, if you see Mother Earth as alive, then you, will, then you won't damage her. However, Mother Earth has become a commodity. She's being used for man's comfort, the steel industry, all of those extractive industries. They're meant to build cars. They're meant to build bridges. They're meant to build other things, but there's no honoring of the earth. And so, you know, we can't, there's things that we could do. There's things that we could work together on. And I think that's important is building relationships with indigenous communities, helping us instead of seeing us as inconvenient when we have our protests, when we're standing up for the earth, when we're standing up for the pipelines, when we're standing up for the water, it's to join us. It's to stand with us. And, 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 and so that's, that's a huge thing. And it's very rare to have that. There are, you know, there are very amazing advocates out there who are helping us. And that's what I found with the Water Walk. There are allied advocates who want to come, who want to help, but it has, it has to extend from that to others, to other parts of, the, of our world, of the earth. And it starts with the young, helping the young to learn because they're the next generations. And that's what we have to think about is the future generations, not just me, not just now. It's to think about everything else. And I don't know, you know, there's no, there's no real answer, like clear answer, but supporting, supporting, helping to fund, helping to get the word out. Just um, whatever ways that people can do. And it's not always just money. Money helps to support different things, but it's also being there, your body, your spirit, and your heart being there. That's what counts. It's hard to fight the corporations by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon, pardon me for a moment, Katie and Leah. I just want to acknowledge Bia, who's Bina, sorry, who's had her hand up for a while. Ani, Bojo, Marianne, Mino Gazep, Musqua, Nanque, and Indijnakaz, Megajan Dodem, Anishinaabe, Kwe, and Dao, Nipissing First Nation, Indunjaba, Cambridge, and Dion. Miigwech, uh, Chi Miigwech for sharing all of your teachings. I've heard you speak before about the water walk um, and I hear a lot about your stories from Lori um, and Teresa and we miss you so much in Kitchener. We miss you so much, my friend. Um, and we're grateful for your teachings. Uh, this COVID year has been very difficult and um, your teachings tonight is the medicine that I needed, Chi Miigwech. Abtugo Gazagan. Miigwech. Miigwech Bina. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for all of your teachings and answering these questions. We do realize we're coming up on 8.30 and so we want to send it um, to Mim for our closing of the evening. Um, okay but perhaps we'll stick around a little while after the closing um, for a few more thoughts and uh, questions to be shared. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Jimmy Marianne, it was um, 
good to listen to you tonight. This is the first time I formally sat and listened to Marianne um, <laughs> speak. It was awesome. Um, I don't, I often don't have anything planned to say. Um, and nothing has, has hit me super hard tonight, except for one, one thing. And I'm going to ask you to do this, even the next time you take a drink of water, but especially the next time that you walk near water or you drive near water, stop and look at it and realize the life that is in that water and give thanks for it. We can survive for a long time without food. We can't survive without water. It is life. We need it. It doesn't need us. So even turning on the tap, like Marianne said, I learned a long time ago when I'm brushing my teeth, I turn off the tap in between the times that I need to put my toothbrush under it because I don't want to waste a single precious drop of that water, even though it automatically comes out of the tap when I turn it on. I remember many times being on reserve and not being able to drink that water out of the tap and having to get it out of a bottle. And I remember that every time I have a drink of water, that, that lesson and that teaching has never left me, that I am privileged to be able to turn on the water. I'm not on town water, I'm on well water, so that's even bigger privilege because um, I don't have chemicals in it. But that water keeps me going and refreshes me. It washes me. It makes me clean. It, it is what I was born from. It is where I go when life is difficult. I go to Lake Ontario or I go up to Lake Simcoe or I find a stream running through a forest and I sit with the water and I let it wash away everything that is causing me difficulty. And I walk away feeling like a new person. And I know I've said this before that we are not human beings, we are humans being. And mm. there's a big difference and we need that water to help us on our way to be a human who is being. So I ask you to pray for the water whenever you see it, when you turn on the top and it's going to feel unfamiliar for some of you to do that, but it is important. And I remember people that walked with Josephine saying that she would pray for the water and they would see change in the water as they were walking. That's a pretty powerful statement. Um, in, and, I, and I say this with all due respect, the Christians don't have the, um, what's the word I want? They're not the only ones that pray. And they're not the only ones that creator hears when they pray. Those words are heard from all of us. The animals, and again, the water, they hear our prayers too, and they need it just as much as we do. So even if it's uncomfortable, just keep on doing it because it will become comfortable. And what is outside our four walls will hear those prayers and know that we are walking with them, that we are not walking by ourselves or they are not walking by themselves. And that, again, they don't need us, but we need them. So with all respect to all the people, the, the human relations, but also all our relations that are out there who don't have what we have right now. Um, we give our prayers and our, our respect. All my relations, stay safe, stay healthy, and walk well, everybody. Thank you, Mim, for closing. Uh, if, there, if people want to stick around for a few minutes, uh, if you have other questions, uh, you can feel free to stick around for a, a few more minutes. Um, I know that uh, people are tired for lots of different reasons. Maybe we'll <laughs> give another five minutes if there's other uh, quick questions. Uh, but if you, Mim has 
officially officially closed the evening. So um, if you need to get off of your screen and get away from screen for the rest of the night, please feel free to just hit that end button. Um, but if you want to